On today's episode, we are getting into the latest space news, including India has a plan to land people on the moon, Blue Origin announces a new space vehicle that can act as an orbital tugboat, and NASA tests their first 3D printed engine nozzle. This is The Space Race. On October 21st, the Indian Space Research Organization performed a crucial test of their prototype crewed capsule barely a week after announcing a packed roadmap of missions that will end with India landing their own astronauts on the moon. The most pressing entry on that roadmap was the Asian country's first crewed launch, due to take place in 2024 or 2025, which is why the uncrewed test on the 21st was so important. Meant to demonstrate the abilities of its crew escape system, the Gaganyan crew module capsule was fitted to a liquid-fueled single-stage rocket that the ISRO had built for just this mission. The vehicle was then launched to an altitude of 12 kilometers, at which point the capsule's escape motors fired, lifting it away from the rocket where it could safely deploy its parachutes and make a soft touchdown in the Indian Ocean. And as the ISRO reported, the test was completely successful. Crew escape systems are a pretty huge milestone for any organization that's taking crewed spaceflight seriously. Every currently operating crew module has one, and they mostly work the same, using high-powered thrusters to power the crew away from a doomed booster before using parachutes to get them safely back to the ground. We saw a good demonstration of this last September, when the uncrewed New Shepard suffered an engine failure and was forced to activate its escape system to save the capsule. Simply put, proving your safety systems work in a real-world launch is a big hurdle to clear, which is good because the ISRO has a lot of big plans on the horizon. As we said earlier, the closest of these is the Gaganyan crewed mission, which is intended to be launched in 2024 or maybe 2025 if delays occur. This mission will launch the crew module into orbit with a full roster of Indian astronauts, and this time they will be carried there on a much more powerful launch vehicle Mark III rocket. But that's just the beginning, because an announcement on October 17th laid out an ambitious 15-year plan for India's space industry, and they are making it clear they intend to be mentioned in the same breath as the US, China, and Europe. Released just after a high-level government meeting with Prime Minister Modi, the Indian space roadmap is almost more packed than the Artemis schedule. After apparently being satisfied with the progress on the Gaganyan human spaceflight missions, the Prime Minister directed his government to begin aiming for new and ambitious goals. So, why not begin with a space station? Now, to be fair, it does seem like everyone is doing it, but India has wanted to build their own station since about 2019 or so, and with all their recent success, it definitely seems like they have the expertise to start planning a serious attempt at it by 2035. Keep in mind that just like any mission roadmap, these new ISRO plans are subject to change, but 11 years seems pretty doable. Some of the other missions announced don't seem to have a hard date set yet, but they include things like the expansion of their laboratories, the development of a new rocket currently called the Next Generation Launch Vehicle, a Venus Orbiter, and a Mars Lander. Finally, the big goal, India wants to put an independent team of astronauts on the moon by 2040. As part of an expanded series of the Chandrayaan and Gaganyaan missions, the ISRO is being told that the aim should be to put an Indian crew on the lunar surface by around the end of the next decade. And while some people might call this a little bold, we don't think it is. First, look at what the ISRO has accomplished already. Back in 2013, they launched the Mars Orbiter mission successfully and operated it smoothly for about eight years. Just this year, they were able to perfect their moon landing tech and get their Chandrayaan-3 vehicle to the moon's South Pole region, the first country to ever land a vehicle there. And just a month after that, they launched their first solar observatory, Aditya L1. India's been kinda killing it lately, but that's not why we think this roadmap is achievable. It's why they've been performing so well that makes us confident. India has been taking a slow, methodical approach to the development of their space capabilities. They build within their means and ability, test, improve, then repeat the process. The Chandrayaan missions are a great example of this. But more than that, 
They have been completing missions that other people have done already with subtle tweaks. They have wisely observed what other agencies have done and figured out their own way of approaching these challenges. The Mars Orbiter was a tech demonstration, Chandrayaan-3 was the first to land at the Lunar South Pole, Aditya is trying to unravel the coronal heating mystery that has stumped physicists for ages, and now India is attempting to launch their first crewed mission and immediately begin planning a space station and lunar landing mission within the same decade. And they won't be doing this alone either. By 2035, other agencies and private companies will have gathered more data on how a modern space station can be constructed. They can get help from these commercial groups, like Blue Origin's new Blue Ring space tug. Stick around to hear more on that later. And of course, by 2040, the Artemis program will have constructed the Lunar Gateway Station, which can only help the ISRO get a team of their astronauts to the moon. Thus far, India has been very pragmatic about their mission choices. They've used every available resource, and they haven't been too proud to lean on older agencies. If they think they can get all these missions done in the next 15 years, then we should probably get ready for a show. On October 16th, a small announcement was made on Blue Origin's website detailing a brand new vehicle that is apparently almost ready to be launched. They are calling it the Blue Ring, and its job is to corner a market that has currently not been touched, but will become incredibly important as the space race heats up. Blue Ring is an orbital tugboat. That's a little bit of an oversimplification, we know, but it's really the best way to describe the new vehicle's primary purpose, space mobility. The whole point of the Blue Ring will be to help move payloads into different orbits and or refueling them, broadening the available options for new satellites, and extending the life of older ones by stabilizing decaying orbits, which is something that doesn't really happen since the shuttle stopped being used. This vehicle has apparently been built by a new internal team of engineers at the company that Blue Origin is calling In Space Systems. It's powered by two deployable 44 meter long solar arrays, has both chemical and electrical engines, and can reportedly move over 3,000 kilograms of payload, about half the size of the massive Psyche asteroid probe that NASA just launched on October 13th. In addition to that, the Blue Ring is also equipped with cloud computing capability which seems to mean that a customer can not only hire Blue Ring to push their hardware into a higher orbit, but also to boost their data capabilities during their mission. And that's certainly a unique offering, especially considering this market is completely empty right now. Blue Origin envisions their tug as being a versatile rig that will sit in orbit until contracted and then get to work helping build out infrastructure for governments or commercial interests. There haven't really been any tug vehicles operating for hire in the commercial space. Plenty are in development though, like Astroscale's Lexi vehicle. But the Blue Ring is attempting to be the first and best name in orbital mobility services, and to go with that, Blue Ring is designed to be launched with any orbit-capable craft, like the Falcon 9, New Shepard, Vulcan, or New Glenn. Which is good because those last three rockets aren't even flying right now, and the team says that they're going to be ready to launch in 2024, but they admit that the launch is more likely to happen in 2025. Which is wild for a newly announced vehicle, but Blue Origin doesn't like to talk much, and so it's likely that they've been developing the Blue Ring for some time now, and just haven't mentioned it. Regardless, this is definitely the correct move. Like we said earlier, this market is grossly underserved, considering the amount of satellites and other hardware going into orbit these days, it's even possible that a group of these tugs could push a crewed capsule or even a starship into a higher orbit for planetary transfers without wasting the mission vehicle's fuel. That said, this is another project on the table for Blue Origin, so we should probably wait until we see it loaded onto a rocket before we start thinking of applications. 3D printing parts for rockets is getting more and more complex, as seen by a successful engine nozzle test of a part made entirely of 3D printed aluminum. In an October 19th blog post, NASA details the results of this test under their reactive additive manufacturing for the Fourth Industrial Revolution, or Ramfire project. The project involves a partnership with two companies called Elementum 3D and RPM Innovations have led to some new technology used in the making of this part 
that is very cutting edge, but the truly impressive part is that it's allowed NASA to use aluminum. Cutting mass from rocket parts is a constant mission for space launch companies and agencies, but aluminum has always been too unstable for the job. However, back in March, Relativity Space launched their Terran 1 3D printed rocket and proved that using 3D printing opens up a whole new range of possibilities. Their engine parts are made of an alloy called Glen Research Copper, which is a light copper alloy that can handle temperatures up to 3,315 degrees Celsius. But aluminum is notoriously bad with heat, even cracking during the welding process. So NASA and its partners had to create a new alloy and use a seriously cool 3D printing process to make their new nozzle. It's called A6061 Ram 2. Not a snappy name, but that's engineers for you. This new aluminum was used to create the test nozzle by way of laser powder direct energy deposition printing technology, which is where RPM Innovations comes in. 3D printing objects like this is an additive manufacturing process, meaning layers are slowly added onto each other until they form the object. In this case, a laser is used to create a melted pool of material, and then the modified aluminum alloy in powder form is blown onto this and allowed to cool. Rinse and repeat for several hours and you have yourself a new aluminum alloy engine nozzle. But that's not the whole story, because just the new alloy alone isn't enough to ensure the heat won't crack that new aluminum. This is where some clever physics comes into play. The nozzle itself is designed to contain small channels inside its structure, which helps distribute heat and bleed it off faster. An innovation that could only really be achieved with 3D printing tech. Making a lighter engine part in one piece is a huge leap forwards for the space industry, and it feels like we're only scratching the surface. NASA's Ramfire project is already designing different types of engine nozzles and various parts, so it likely won't be too long before we're seeing more 3D printed parts show up in NASA missions. Meet us back here every week for more updates on everything aerospace industry and interstellar exploration related. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up today if you liked it, that really helps us out for real. And subscribe to the Space Race for more videos just like this. We do one long form essay and one news update every week. And if you'd like more, we've got two more on the screen for you right now.